QuickBooks Online 2024 Accounts Payable Graphs. Get ready and some trail mix because we're hiking on QuickBooks Online, our audit trail to success. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are online in our browser, searching for QuickBooks Online Test Drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com and the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version of the software, and then we're going to verify that we're not a robot. What if I was a robot? What if I was a robot? They ain't going to do nothing. QuickBooks Intuit's not going to do anyway. Reports on the left hand side. And then we're going to go into the favorites. We're going to be right clicking on the balance sheet and open link in a new tab. Then we'll right click on the profit and loss or income statement. Open link in a new tab like we do every time. Let's go to that middle tab to check it out. Closing up the hand boogie. And then we're going back to 2023. No, 01, 01, 23. 12 31 2 3 it might be safer there than 2024 you never know you never know we're going to go to the tab to the right we're going to close out the hamburger we're going back in time we're going to huddle in 2023 01 01 2 3 12 31 2 3 and run the report that's the setup process that we do every time noting that these two reports are the major financial statement reports all other reports basically usually giving more information more detail about one or multiple line items of these two major financial statement reports we now want to look at some fancy graphs that we might want to be adding last time we looked at the accounts receivable graphs remember the, the graphs just want to point out that the first place you probably would go is to put more detailed graphs on your income type of things breaking out income by customer or breaking it out by what you sell items uh or and then you might go to your accounts receivable which we did last time if you have accounts receivable which you would only have if you have sub ledgers and then uh you can also do a similar thing just to show you where you might use these graphs we can also go to an accounts payable if you're using accounts payable and accrual system entering bills instead of just paying the expenses as they become due then you can use this type of graph pretty easy really easy one to make so if you're trying to batch stuff together to provide to a client or something this one would be an easy one to make just a pie chart on if you wanted to do that how could we well we can go to the first tab we can go down to the reports on the left hand side oh hold on a second i was on the reports and then you went off the reports so then i can close the hand boogie scrolling down looking for who you owe stuff what you owe and so we're looking in here and we want to look at the sub ledger which is the vendor balance detail so i'll right click on the vendor balance detail open link in new tab and then we'll tab to the right to look at that link that we opened in it closing the ham boogie and then we'll boogie back in time going to this custom date range 12 31 2 3 running it and there it is it's an as of a point in time report doesn't have a beginning date because it's related to a balance sheet seeing what we owe to other people as of this point in time nice clean no sub ledgers we have to deal with easy easy report to make a pie chart from we could just export this to excel basically highlight these numbers make a pie chart just like we did with the ar noting that that total 160267 should tie out to what's on the balance sheet over here it does don't it so let's do it back into the report on the right hitting the drop down but not too hard don't break it just hit it nice lightly tap it maybe would be a better term uh you know i tell people to hit the thing and they start breaking my machinery the computer is not designed the computer is not a punching bag okay 
I'm just, it's just a boxing term or something that has been, that we use hitting things. You don't actually try to knock out the thing. The mouse is small. Mice are small. You can't hit them that hard. Anyways, so I'm going to put this over here into the major reports that we did last time. You don't have to do this to practice this process, but I'm going to imagine that we're putting all these reports together. We put our AR reports over here. Now we're going to do our AP graphs so we can print them all out on one PDF file and totally impress the our client who's going to be like, wow, you went above and beyond the, the call of the duties. Let's go on over here, move or copy. The call of the duties is usually my dog calling for the duty that needs work. Any case, we're going to vendor balance summary. Let's bring this on over. We'll copy it over to our other worksheet and then we'll format it. So I'll copy that over there and then it should be, hold on. I messed up. Let me do it again. I want to make it go into, I want to make it go to the month in reports. Started thinking about duty and it disturbed me. And I got messed up. Okay, so then I'm just going to drag this to the right. Take care of your own duty. I'm going to double click on it down here. And then this is going to be the AP data. AP, let's call it graph data. So then we'll just clean this up. I'm going to hold down control, scroll up. I'll do this quickly because we saw basically the same process in the AR side. So I'll do it fairly fast. So I'm going to put my cursor on column one. Scroll down to column five, right click. I don't need that stuff. So I'm going to right click, delete it. I'm going to be taking the total from columns or row six on down, right click, delete that stuff too. And then I like to format it in one formatting. I'm going to use this Calibri 11 by simply home tab, format paint painter, paintbrush the entire worksheet. So it has the same format. And then I'll reformat the entire worksheet, right clicking on it formatting the cells. I like to make it currency, negative numbers bracketed, no dollar sign. We don't really need the decimals in this case because it's going to be a rounded pie chart, not really the most specific type of thing. Pennies are just going to confuse people. Home tab, let's make it bold. We have to embolden it for presentation purposes. And then we'll make this cell a little bit smaller. Okay, so there it is. Now we'd like to make it from highest to lowest. So we're going to add the filters. You could select these. You could go into your data tab up top and hit the filters up top, but not too hard. And then you, but I don't like doing that. Usually I like to go into the insert tab and then insert a table around it. Boom. And then I'll call this top table, my vendors. And this is going to be the AP. I'll just call it accounts payable. And then we just select. So then I'm going to sort it from Z to A. So I want to hit the drop down and sort it from Z to A, top to bottom. So then we'll just select this stuff and insert a pie chart. So we can go into the insert. We can go into the charts. And this time, let's do a standard pie chart this time. Again, you could do the 3D, but the 3D to me is deceptive. So it's fancy looking, but manipulative people could use that. Marketers use that. I feel like, again, I feel like if you feel like someone's like it's, yeah, I don't trust it. I just don't doesn't doesn't sit right with me. So I'm going to say that this is going to be uh, AP. Let's just say vendors, vendor balances, something like that. And then maybe this this uh, key down here is obviously taking up too much space. So I could select the, the plus button and adjust the legend. So I could put it on the right, on the top, on the left, on the bottom. And then we have more options to open up on the right hand side. So it looks like this one on the right at least is a little bit nicer. And so let's just choose that one. We might want to have the data labels, which once again have the labels inside here. Because this is a dark, a fairly dark color setting, we might then go up top and say that we want to go into the formatting and maybe make the text white. Uh, so you, again, you might want to make these into percentages in a pie chart format. So one way you can do that is you can go, okay, I'm going to hit the plus button 
and data labels add more options, more options, and then I can make it a percent like that and then remove the values. I'm just gonna make it a percent. So, so that would be typical. Now, if I wanna verify that percent, I could have just made another column over here. Like let's make a total column, data uh, or table design, make a total. So there's the total, which should tie out to our reports over here. We wanna make sure it ties out because if it doesn't and we give a meeting or something, then someone's gonna say, hey, what does that tie out to? It doesn't tie out. And percent of AP, and we're just gonna be like, yeah, but it looks cool. We know why the pie charts are really there. It's because it looks cool. Okay, if you wanna know what actually is going on, look at the numbers for crying out loud. But anyways, we go to the home tab, numbers, and then percent. If I sum this up, that should add up to the total. Uh, we'll sum it up, boom. So you could, of course, use, you could have just made a pie chart on these numbers, right? I could take this and then this. I'm holding down control to highlight non-adjacent cells or cells that are not next to each other. And then I could have gone to the insert duh, duh, pie chart, boom. And I could have done it that way. And then when I add my, then you get the percentages that way. So you could do it that way as well, but you don't need to because you could, you could do it the other way and that would be fine. If I add then an, a bar chart to it as well, we can do boom, table design, or let's insert, let's just do the standard bar chart this time since when we went fancy, not that's a histogram. We're not doing histograms. We'll still go a little fancy, maybe with like the sideways bar chart, like that maybe. And then you could change the colors of it and whatnot if you wanted to, but I won't go into depth on that. That's just to get an idea. You can do a whole lot of stuff with it, of course, but I can't, I don't want this to print out over here. So what I could do is I can make another tab, right? I can right click or not right click, I'm just gonna add a tab, double click on it. This is gonna be the AP graph. And then I'm just gonna pull these graphs over. I'm just gonna right click on this graph, copy it, and then paste it over here. Right click and paste. Maybe I should have cut it. Let's cut it and paste. Uh-oh, did I cut it? Let's right click and cut. I did cut it, but I said copy. Do what I do, not what I say, unless I do the wrong thing and then say the right thing, in which case, do what I say and not what I do. And so I'm not sure you should, that's kind of confusing. So in any case, let's go to the layout view and then back on over and see if we can format this. Now, if you wanted to make it landscape, you might be able to make them larger, right? So I can go up top and say, let's make this landscape because my the charts are so beautiful that in order to fully appreciate them, you need to set your camera to landscape, boom. And then we could do that. So now it doesn't really fit on one page. So I can put this maybe on the second page. And then I have a whole nother page down here, even though it's not on a different tab and I can landscape it like that. Oh my goodness. But now if I print it, this will print too. And I don't want that to print just to show you if I go back on over here and we go to the print and I'm now going to print it to my cute PDF printer. So I have all my reports in one place, but, and it's printing the entire workbook. And then if I scroll down, see, it looks, it has all the reports. And then there's my other graph, but then it's got that data thing. And I don't want that, but then it has my two graphs and they look, they look great. That's better than a, a land beach paint, a beach landscape picture. So let's right click on this one instead and hide it. So it doesn't show up. And then I can go to the file tab print and let's check it out again. We're going to print it to the PDF printer, entire workbook. So there's our reports do, do, do. You may not have added those, but I'm adding to a prior presentation. The point is if you, there's our graphs we did before AR, here's our, our landscape this time. Notice it shows up vertically, even though it's landscape with our, with our balance, uh, vendor balance. And then this one, here's our AP in a, in a chart, uh, bar chart. 
Let's go ahead and print it. That looks perfecto, just like Mundo would do it. My friend Mundo, the perfectionist. It's perfecto, just like Mundo would do it. Okay, so then I'm going to unhide. Now, note that you can unhide, too. Like, if I select from here to here, or let's go from here and then hold down Shift to here, right-click and unhide. Unhide. So, if you here's the two that are hidden in there. So, if you suspect that there's hidden stuff in... Uh, in a worksheet, I'm going to right click and unhide. Then this is how you you might want to check out to see if there's hidden stuff. So now I've brought it back out. And if I can then I'll save this, I'll take a look at our worksheet. Now that we have the landscape view, we will admire it just like a setting sunset over the Pacific. And so we'll say here it goes. There's the landscape. It still shows vertically. And then down here, we have the more reports. And then there's our AR, which was portrait. And then we have the landscape still shows up, still shows up. So I read it's not, it didn't shift it sideways. So I have to turn, like, look at my, I have to turn my computer on its side, my monitor on its side to see it. No, it shifted so that it looks correct, just like it should do. That makes sense. So there's that one.